Um, Chief Brown joins us uh, live from Dallas. And, and Chief, you were telling us before the break uh, about this horrific standoff period uh, where the killer was um, singing and saying things that were confusing uh, to negotiators. You were worried about more of your men being killed. Tell us more uh, about this phone call. What, what was he singing? What was he saying? Did he seem at all in control of himself? He seemed it very much in control and very determined about hurting more officers. Um, I don't recall what he was singing or, or much about what he was saying. We're, we're, we're trying to get some of our audio transcribed from some of that conversation. Uh, but uh, as soon as we do, I, I, I'm going to release that because we just believe in transparency as much as possible of, of all police incidents. Uh, but I just don't have that here today. But I could just tell you, he, he was clear of mind, determined to hurt more officers. And w w without our actions, he would have hurt more officers. To, uh, so we, we had no choice in my mind but to use all tools necessary. And it, it, it was uh, about a pound of C4 uh, to end the standoff. I want to uh, just ask briefly about the decision to send in this bomb robot. Um, which you said that you would make the same decision. Again, as you know, it's prompted a lot of discussion among law enforcement officials about whether or not um, there should be some sort of discussion nationwide uh, about the use of this type of uh, robot. D just to ask a question about this, could something else have been used other than a bomb that would have killed the shooter? Obviously, in a situation like that, law enforcement has every uh, right and ability to take out the shooter any way he can. But could, for instance, some sort of riot gas been used instead of something that killed the gunman? I, I just don't give much quarter to critics who uh, ask these types of questions from the comforts and safety uh, away from the incident. You have to be on the ground <clears throat> and try and determine. I've got former SWAT experience here in Dallas and you have to trust your people to make the calls necessary to save their lives. It's their lives that are at stake, uh, not these critics' lives who are, are in the comforts of their homes or, or, or offices. So, uh, you know, that's not worth my time to debate at this point. Uh, we believe that we saved lives by making this decision. And, you know, again, I, I appreciate uh, critics, uh, but they're not in on the ground and, and, and their lives are not being uh, put at, at risk by, by debating what tactics to take. And I, I'll leave that to them for a later discussion. Let's talk about your story, your own personal story, because it's rather extraordinary. You've lost your, your partner, a former partner of yours to gun violence, your brother to gun violence. And just weeks after you became the leader of the Dallas Police Department in 2010, your son, <clears throat> pardon me, your son fatally shot a police officer and another man before he before being killed in a confrontation with police. How do you think these experiences have shaped the way you faced the horrific events of this week? First of all, I came into law enforcement in 1983 as a result of the crack cocaine epidemic in my old neighborhood. I grew up in uh, the poor areas of Dallas. I'm, I'm an inner city kid, and, and I really appreciate my experiences growing up here. And this city has embraced me as its police chief, and I've always felt uh, a sense of uh, urgency about delivering police service. Uh, but I never wanted this job to be about me uh, then or now. I'm a servant, and uh, at my core, I enjoy serving people. And uh, I'm a person of faith. Uh, I'm a Christian, and, and I b believe that uh, service is part of my uh, direction. Uh, and, and loving people despite themselves is, is something I aspire to be. I'm flawed, though like many of us, uh, but I can tell you right now, you know, I'm not going to have a long conversation about me on this broadcast or any others. This is going to be about the men and women in blue who sacrifice their lives every day and these families planning four funerals. Uh, so I want to spend a lot of time talking about uh, what I've learned about these officers. They're brave. They're courageous. They did things that day that are just hard to describe. Um, we're learning that officers to expose themselves to draw fire so they could determine what floor this suspect was on. Expose themselves. And you saw footage of officers running toward gunfire. Uh, extraordinary acts of bravery. 
uh, countless officers uh, returning fire, uh, knowing that they're vulnerable to tr try to get to wounded and injured citizens and officers to get them rushed to the hospital to try to save their lives. And just the brave men and women who have worked every day. The, the day after this incident occurred, I look at the daily roles to see who comes to work. Everyone came to work the next day. Who, who does that, Jake? In, in, in the face of their lives being at stake the previous day, you think you'd have some call in and say, maybe that's not for me. Everyone came to Rex to work that next day, and I'm just proud to be associated with these people. I stay humble, and so I'm not going to talk much about me. Uh, I, I think you said uh, much about my story, and it, I think it speaks for itself, and I hope that, that I've done a good enough job to represent these brave men and women. That's been the challenge for me, and I representing them appropriately. So I'm really, really, really... Uh, not wanting to, uh, any of this to be about me, Jake, and I hope you can appreciate that. I can, sir. What can you tell us about the officers who were wounded? Many of the officers have been released already. Uh, one of the DART officers was still in, 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 in treatment at the hospital on, on yesterday, but I believe he's going to be released if, if today if, if he didn't get released late last night. Uh, they're recovering, but they're, they're not only the, those officers, but uh, just looking in the faces of all of my officers, when, when, when I see them coming in and out of, of, of headquarters and out on the street, uh, they're, 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 they're in shock, Jake. They're, you know, one thing, other thing that I've learned about this is that the conversation about policing in, in this country, it, this is not sustainable to keep these officers encouraged. Uh, these officers risk their lives for $40,000 a year, $40,000 a year. And this is not sustainable not to support these people uh, we're not perfect. There's cops that don't need to be cops, and I've, I've been the first to say uh, we need to separate employment with those types of cops, one, one or two percent. But the 98 percent, 99 percent of cops come to work and do this job for 40 grand and risk their lives not knowing whether they come home get this criticism. That's just not right and it's not sustainable. And, and I, I'm just making a plea to this country to stand up as a silent majority and show your support for these people to keep them encouraged to protect you. Uh, and and I'm, I'm saying this from the heart. I hope I'm not lecturing too much, but this is, this is really important uh, from my perspective that we show these folks that we applaud their heroism uh, and, and that we let them know without a question that we support you in your efforts to protect us. Who specifically do you think needs to show more support to our men and women in blue? Is this something that you're directing to public officials, to any specific protesters, to the media? Who do you wish were more supportive? Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. Media, public officials, and our communities. Uh, how media tells the story. How you, how, how you sensationalize the video. How you edit the video. Show the whole story, and when you don't know the whole story, say there's more to be determined instead of jumping quickly to conclusions well, without a full investigation. Uh, we need more people in the community to come forward. There's a silent majority out there that doesn't realize that a minority uh, voice is loud, uh, critical of law enforcement without all the facts. And our public officials, uh, local and national, uh, need to step up, uh, and I'm encouraged by what I've heard, um, but we all need to make sure that there's no question in the mind of our officers that they're supported uh, when they do the right things. And of the, of the few that don't, uh, we as leaders in the profession need to separate employment uh, with them so that, that the 98 percent doesn't get painted with the broad brush of those one or two percenters that shouldn't be police officers. So you, you can have both of these discussions and be clear of the people who dedicate themselves professionally to deliver police service that you support them w w without painting everyone with the broad brush or the majority of the media coverage be uh, the negativity that happens uh, in, in our profession. What do you say to the people who were protesting in Louisiana last night or the people who were protesting in Minnesota last night? Um, majority African-American protesters who feel as though uh, their lives don't matter as much to the police. Uh, what do you say to them? 
We're so sworn to protect you and your right to protest, and we'll give our lives for it. And it's sort of like uh, being in a relationship where uh, you love that person, but that person can't express or show you love back. I don't know if you've been in a relationship like that before, Jake, uh, but that's a tough relationship to be in where we show our love because there's no greater love than to give your life for someone. And that's what we're continuing to be willing to do. Uh, and we just need to hear from the protesters back to us. We appreciate the work you do uh, for us in our right to protest. That, that should be fairly easy. The Obama administration's uh, response to a lot of the violence we've seen in the last week has been to talk about further regulations on gun ownership or gun control. What is your view? Do you think that it's too easy for individuals to get guns in this country? So, Jake, I went born last night. Let's let the policymakers solve that problem, do their job. Uh, I'm a servant. Uh, so, ask me a question about serving this country, and I'll talk to you for hours. You ask me a policy question uh, that policymakers haven't resolved. I'm going to punt and kick it back to you. So many Americans out there are mourning uh, the five brave police officers who were killed. Um, they want to do something. They want to be able to help. What can they do to help? There's two organizations here in Dallas uh, that will take funds directly to the family members. And re really why that's important, particularly now, is uh, those officers that gave their lives, got their last paycheck until the life insurance and funding comes in, which will be weeks later, sometimes months later. But they have bills due next month. And short-term uh, funding is vitally important to get their mortgages paid and their car notes paid and food on the table. So DallasFoundation.org and ATODallas.org forward slash donate are the two organizations that your funds will be well spent in keeping these families afloat whose, whose partners, who loved one, gave the ultimate sacrifice to protect uh, the citizens of Dallas. DallasFoundation.org and ATODallas.org forward slash donate. And we have those graphics up uh, underneath you as you say that, and I will repeat them before the interview ends. One last question for you, sir. What else should we know? What else do you want the American people to know? That the law enforcement community is, is hurting. We're all grieving, not just here in Dallas, all over the country. Uh, and words matter. And, and we need to hear that you appreciate what we do for this country. Thank you, Jake. Dallas Police Chief David Brown, it's been an honor talking to you this morning, sir. And again, those websites are dallasfoundation.org <clears throat> and atodallas.org slash donate. Chief Brown, once again, thank you for your service for our country, for the people of Dallas, and thanks for talking to us today. God bless.